PyTorch Lightning or PL is another toolkit. Similar to other toolkits, PL aims to simplify deep learning model training, validation, and deployment with one simple rule, decouple research code from engineering. Code written in pure PyTorch has many repetitions that are error prone. PL abstracts this away so a researcher can just focus on the important problems. In supervised learning, we learn the important elements of machine learning, experience, task, and performance, or simply ETP. The general principle of PL adheres to this philosophy. PL focuses on removing as many boilerplate code as possible so we can focus on ETP. Let us compare PyTorch with PyTorch Lightning. In PyTorch, we define train val test functions and for loops. We also need to write code blocks for the optimizer and scheduler, all in proper places and sequence. In PyTorch, we also need to define our data set data loader class so we can efficiently handle data during training and evaluation. We must also be aware on which device the data and model should be loaded. In PyTorch, we have to manually compute, accumulate, and display performance metrics and losses. Meanwhile, in PL, all of these are gone. PL saves us a lot of time and headache. Installation is straightforward. PIP installs PyTorch Lightning, Torch Metrics. We include Torch Metrics so we can use the built in performance measure functions. Then we import the class and function definitions that we need. We will discuss Lightning Module Trainer 1B Logger and Accuracy in the succeeding slides. From our previous C410 classifier in PyTorch, we see a great amount of coding is involved. In the next slides, we show how we put everything in one class that is a subclass of Lightning Module or LM. Our model, data, and performance are built in in this class. First, an LM model has a PyTorch model. In fact, an LM model acts like a regular PyTorch NN module with a forward method. In this example, we are building an MNIST classifier using ResNet 18. We can also define the loss function during init. Next, we eliminate writing custom functions and for loops by simply using the following methods. Every training step is done within training step function. At the minimum, training step returns the value of the loss function. The backpropagation will be done automatically. At the end of each training epoch, a summary of loss and other metrics are computed and displayed. The same simple routines are done for the evaluation. Note that we use torch metrics accuracy so that we do not need to manually compute this performance score. Our data loaders are now both LM methods. Here we instantiate the data loader using the built-in MNIST datasets from torch vision. We use a simple two tensor for the transform. If we require more complex data handling, it is best to separate the data loaders by creating another class. This time, it is a subclass of Lightning Data Module. With this module, we can perform specialized steps like collate FN, data storage, transforms, and other processing methods. Finally, the last step uses an instance of trainer to manage the training and evaluation. We tell the trainer which AI accelerator, such as GPU or TPU, that we want to use, how many of them, and the number of epochs that we want to train the model. PL has a good integration with 1B through 1B logger, so we can further simplify tracking all training and evaluation logs. Calling fit performs the training while test performs the evaluation. Trainer automates many of the boilerplate code in training and testing. We do not need to create for loops, disabling and enabling gradients, and displaying performance metrics and losses. The right device is chosen automatically. 
call to optimizer and scheduler is automatic. We can use callbacks to perform all sorts of logging. Thank you for listening. We will have a code demo. Our first demo is image recognition and MNIST using PyTorch Lightning. We demonstrate the elements machine learning experience, tasks, and performance. For experience, we use MNIST dataset. For tasks, we classify the images into 10 categories. For performance, we use accuracy. Our demo uses PyTorch Lightning to simplify the process of training and testing. 1B is used by PL to log train and evaluation results. First thing that we will do is install PyTorch Lightning and Torch metrics. Afterward, we import the modules, classes, and functions, and then we define our PyTorch Lightning module. During init, we define the model as ResNet18, and we replace the first convolutional layer to support grayscale images. The ResNet18 supports 10 classes. We also define here the loss function and the forward supports the forward propagation of the module. This is a training step, which is basically the same as the one described in the slides. Every time it's called, one batch is loaded and prediction is computed, then the loss is computed and returned. At every training epoch, we compute the average loss. This is also logged by the 1B logger. Every time we call set.log, the 1B logger is actually called. We do the same for the test, except that we load the test data set, but also we compute the loss and the accuracy. We save the prediction, the test loss, and the test accuracy for 1B logging later on. And then the test at every epoch, we compute the average loss and the average accuracy, which is also logged in the 1B logger. The validation is same as the test. We call configure optimizers before doing the training and we call setup to configure all the data loaders. We can instantiate the callback object to perform certain tasks during training. In this case, we log sample images, ground truth labels, and predicted labels from the test data set. Our callback object is called 1B callback. It is called after every validation batch end. It processes the first 10 images of the first batch and it logs those images, ground truth, labels, and predictions on a 1B table. These are the program arguments. We will train the model for five epochs, batch size of 32, and learning rate of 0 0.001. There are 10 classes in MNIST dataset, and we will use one GPU AI accelerator with 48 workers corresponding to the number of cores in the CPU. Training and evaluation happens using a trainer. First, we instantiate the PyTorch Lightning module, and then we instantiate a trainer using one GPU as our accelerator. We will train the model for five epochs, and we will use 1B as our logger. For callback, we will use the 1B callback that we defined earlier. Training happens by calling fit with model argument. And after that, we will call test with model argument to perform evaluation. 1B that finish will clean up all 1B logging. With just five epochs and a simple training configuration, we can already achieve 99.1% accuracy on the test data set. More training and evaluation logs can be viewed on 1B online. Using 1B online, we can visualize the table created by 1B callback. Here we can see sample images, ground truth labels, and prediction. For example, we can see the image of digit 7, ground truth 7, prediction is 7, 
the digit two image, the ground truth is true, and the prediction is two. We can also visualize training and test logs. For example, here we can see that as the training progresses, the training loss is decreasing, the test accuracy is increasing, and the test loss is decreasing. The second example is keyword spotting or KWS using PyTorch Lightning. We illustrate how to use PL to train a model for keyword spotting. We also show how to build a model that is data agnostic meaning to say it can be trained on any data set. A separate module handles the data sets and data loaders. Using experience, task, and performance concept, KWS can be described as follows. Experience, the model is trained on a data set of audio files containing one second speech samples. Each is a single keyword. There are 35 distinct words in the data set, such as yes, no, right, left, and so forth. However, two additional categories are added to the data set, silence and unknown. Silence is when there is silence or non-word audio activity, such as background noise. Unknown is when there is a keyword, but none one of the 35 distinct keywords. The task is to classify keywords in audio samples. We use a modified ResNet 18 model, and the performance is still measured by accuracy. For simplicity, we will not use the validation set, and for data set, we use KWS version 2. We create a custom silence data set. The data set randomly samples background audio files supplied in the KWS data set. These files are under a background noise folder. We also create a known data set using random audio samples from the train set, but labeled as unknown. The creation of these two data sets is described in the KWS paper and implemented below. We limit the number of samples to about the size of train data set divided by 35, or the number of distinct words in the KWS data set. The PyTorch Lightning data module for KWS is shown here. The KWS data module cleanly separates the data handling from the model. The data module handles the data sets and data loaders. We use Torch Audio Speech Commands data set to load the training, testing, and validation sets. A custom Collate FM is used to handle the different lengths of the audio samples. The function also converts the web file into MEL spectrogram for ResNet 18 model input layer. A MEL spectrogram is a log MEL spectrogram. It's an image that shows the power spectrum of the audio in DB. Basically, we convert an audio into image so that we can use an image classifier like ResNet 18. During init of KWS data module, we initialize the configuration, the MEL spectrogram generator, and in prepared data set, we load the train, val, and test data sets. One thing special here is the creation of silence and unknown data sets, which are eventually concatenated with the train data set. We also configure here the transform, which is actually a MEL spectrogram generator. These are the train, valve, and test data loaders. This is the Collate FN. One thing special with Collate FN is it ensures that all waveforms are one second in net, if not bad with zeros. It also converts MEL from power to DB, and then eventually it returns all MELs, labels, and WAMs. The PL Lightning module for KWS is basically the same as the one in MNIST. The only difference here is we already removed the data loader part, and we also include a learning rate scheduler. The 1B callback for KWS is basically the same as the 1B callback in MNIST. The only difference here is we visualize the MEL spectrogram instead of the MNIST digit. We also include the audio so we can play it back for manual validation. 
These are the program arguments. We will train the model for 30 epochs, batch size of 64, learning rate of 0.001. The data set will be stored in path, and the number of classes is 37. These are the MEL spectrogram parameters, and we will use a 16-bit floating point model to reduce the size. Same case as in MNIST, we will use one GPU AI accelerator and 48 workers. This is KWS training and evaluation using trainer. Accuracy is about 94.5% or 94% using 16-bit training. This is on test data set. Benchmark accuracy is 88.2% on the original paper, but the state of the art is 97%. These are the distinct keywords. We instantiate KWS model and KWS data module separately. We instantiate a 1B logger here, and we instantiate a model checkpoint. This will be used to save the best performing model for later use. This is the trainer. We use one GPU accelerator, 16-bit precision training, and max epoch of 30. There is an additional callback, which is the model checkpoint. The trainer, fit, and test are basically the same, except that we tell fit and test to use data modules that we created. And then finally, we close 1B by calling finish. This is an example of 1B log for KWS. Here we can see audio, male spectrogram, ground truth, and prediction. This audio is for stop. This is a male spectrogram and ground truth stop, prediction stop. We can play it back. Stop. That is stop. This is Sheila. Sheila. Ground truth Sheila and also prediction is Sheila. We can visualize the male spectrogram by zooming in. For example, this is male spectrogram of stop. Finally, we can save the best performing model in a format that is suitable for production inference. Here we convert the best performing model in just-in-time compilation format. We will have a separate application to demonstrate the use of this model. KWS Infer is a simple GUI application that loads and runs the JIT model that we just saved. It runs on x86 or Raspberry Pi 4. Let's have a simple demonstration of KWS Infer. Yes. No, one, two, three, Marvin, Sheila, stop. <laughs> 